Welcome to a presentation of Grassroots Health about our Protect Our Children Now project. And our focus on this presentation is really going to be how to do it. This is Carol Baggerly. I am the director of Grassroots Health and probably the lead person at this moment in working with the Protect Our Children Now project. And before we go into the details of the science and the how-to, I really want to talk a minute or two about the history of the Protect Our Children Now project. When Grassroots Health first started in 2007, believe it or not, um, a long time ago it seems, we were out to solve the world's vitamin D deficiency epidemic. And while we feel that we have made significant headway, it just wasn't moving fast enough. So our major question three years ago now was how to make it faster. And the real question was who cares? And the biggest group of people we found that really care right this minute about making a difference, not too surprisingly in retrospect, were pregnant women. They have a lot at stake. They recognize they have a lot at stake. And many, many, many pregnant women have had a baby before. And so if they had difficulty at all with their first delivery, they were very interested in doing anything at all that they could to help their health with this. As it happened in 2012, Drs. Carol Wagner and Dr. Bruce Hollis of the Medical University of South Carolina published the landmark paper that said that women who got their vitamin D serum levels up to at least 40 nanograms per milliliter or 100 nanomoles per liter had a much safer pregnancy and much better health outcomes for themselves and for their children. So I'd like to show you now what some of those outcomes were and why this is so significant. Because this research, as the title right here says, moving research into practice, this is the research that we are moving into practice. And I will tell you more about the specific project as we go forward. Right here, the association between 25-OHD. 25-OHD is the way you say vitamin D serum level um, to vitamin D researchers. Um, but that and between preterm births. We're going to focus a lot on preterm births because it's such a big problem. It's a life and death problem. And there were many other comorbidities of pregnancy, including um, excessive weight gain, including muscle strength, including um, uh, hypertension that are definitely affected by vitamin D as well. But the preterm births is the major thing we are going to focus on. At any rate, this particular chart, if you take a look at the left side of the chart over here, right here, this shows at a level of 20 nanomoles per liter, which is very low. Uh, it's about 8 nanograms per milliliter. Note that as you go forward and get higher vitamin D levels, the risk over here on the left column, it says associated risk of preterm birth, the risk of having a preterm birth goes down very, very, very steeply until you get out here to about 38 nanograms per milliliter. This paper was recently published in February of 2015 by Dr. Lisa Bodner uh, of the University of Pittsburgh. And what she published was a study of 3,453 women that showed how significant increasing the vitamin D level was. There was fully a 51% reduction in preterm births by getting a baby's or by getting the mother's serum level to 38 nanograms per milliliter. This is a phenomenal piece of research. One of the things that was especially interesting about Dr. Bodner's paper, remember I mentioned that this was done in 2015. But one of the especially interesting things was one of the statements in Dr. Bodner's paper was, now we need to do a clinical trial to see if this is really true. Well, we've already done the clinical trial. We went back with the data from Hollis and Wagner and replotted it. it you can plot data in all kinds of ways. 
but we replotted it in the same format that Dr. Had, Dr. Bodner had plotted hers to see what difference does it make and how does this data look from Hollis and Wagner versus the Bodner data. And what you see is almost exactly the same trend line. Way back over here at the left, the risk uh, of preterm birth was 0.5, excuse me, 0.25. And then you can see as you go down, or the risk goes significantly down as you increase the serum level with the using exactly the same points that Dr. Bodner did, starting at eight nanograms per milliliter, going to 38 nanograms per milliliter, there was a 62% reduction in preterm births. The difference in 51 and 62 certainly depends on the kind of data. But the fact is that this was a randomized clinical trial and demonstrated very completely that the data that Dr. Bodner showed was indeed going to hold up. Uh, and note here the number of women in that particular study that Drs. Wagner and Hollis did was 509, not 3,500, but it was true. The next piece of information, again on the Hollis-Wagner data here that I wanted to show you, is where these preterm births were. And if you take a look at the bottom axis down here from 0, 10, 20, that's the serum level, that's the vitamin D level from about 0, which you really can't read, uh, up to about 80 nanograms per milliliter. There were women in that study who had those levels. And if you take a look at the kind of orange color there, the preterm births, you can see exactly where they occurred. And there is a grouping of them down here, and there is still there are still some even above the 38 nanograms per milliliter. But if we just draw a line right there at the median, there was a 58, excuse me, 51% reduction at 38 nanograms per milliliter, and that's what it looks like. You can also extend that uh, line, or draw a different one as it were, up here around 60 nanograms per milliliter, and you see that you get close to a 100% reduction by getting even higher. We know fully that the 40 nanograms to 60 nanograms per ml is truly extremely safe. That also was demonstrated in the study. So we have the science to show that this is what we need to do. This is another picture of the data. And this I wanted to show you because there are so many people uh, that pay attention to the March of Dimes. And this shows the March of Dimes data for the area of South Carolina in Charleston where the Hollis Wagner study was done. The blue bars starting from the left, the Hispanic rate of preterm births is 12.6 percent. That is very high. For whites there are approximately 10.4 percent of all births are preterm. For the black population it's 18.2 percent 18.2, just imagine that, the risk of having a preterm birth uh, is that high. And then for the Asians, it was 13.9. Uh, and then for the total overall average was about 13.4. Across the United States, right now the average is about 10%, which is very high. Regardless, in South Carolina, it's even higher. Now take a look at those orange lines that were drawn through the middle there. Uh, like for example, on the total, if you draw the orange line right there where my arrow is, what you have is a 6.5% uh, incidence. And the orange lines represent the data from the Hollis Wagner study. What did they have? So they had 6.5%. And if we compare that, of course, to the Marcia Dimes data at 13.4, there was a 51% reduction, which again is really what we were saying with the Bodner presentation as well as the, the Hollis Wagner data looked at otherwise. Take a look at the black population. It was also 6.8% from 18.2. We have lives to save here, enormous, but that was a 63% reduction. The white was 8.6% from 
from the Hollis and Wagner study versus 10.4 for a 17% reduction. They were lower to start with, so it's not too surprising. And then the Hispanics from a 12.6% all the way down to 3.8% for a full 70% rate reduction. What is especially interesting here as well is that there is an awful lot of concern in many health areas about um, the health disparity issue between different ethnicities. If you take a look at this and just kind of draw a line from left to right along the orange lines, pretty much the racial disparity issue goes away. It even has been proposed, not just with this, but with other diseases, that the health part of the racial disparities is a vitamin D issue. I want to talk about that for just a minute. It's not a totally side issue here. Why would that be? Why would the African American or black population have such a problem? Vitamin D and our getting it at this point in time, the reason we have a problem is almost exclusively due to a lack of sunshine. And sunshine, the reason we have a lack of sunshine is because we're inside working and or playing computer games. Um, and or just not being outside or in a northern clime. Um, the black skin takes longer to be outside in the sun to absorb the same amount of vitamin D that a white person would need. And you know that our origins really were equatorial, which is where the people were black and they were outside um, for quite a while. So the fact that you would see this change in the racial disparity issue with vitamin D um, by getting the vitamin D levels up is not really surprising. With all of this data, <coughs> with all of this data, uh, we said, okay, what are we going to do about it? So we devised, Grassroots Health devised a project called Protect Our Children Now in order to put this into practice. We don't want to do another clinical trial. It's been done. It's been demonstrated. It's safe. What we want to do now is to put this into medical practice where it really is what we call standard of care. The doctors test pregnant women's vitamin D levels they prescribe and or help counsel them with how much vitamin D they need in order to get their serum levels up and be safe. So the method that we have defined right now is what we are going to show you. We have with a 500 woman size group, we're essentially doing a new quality program for the hospital at the Medical University of South Carolina. It, Everything that we are doing is designed to be done any place. It's just that is where this project has started. Um, what we have here is vitamin D testing three times during the pregnancy. That the very first visit of the woman uh, is where they need their test. And then twice again, once at about six months and then once right before delivery to see how is she doing. And then obviously supplementation as necessary. Different people require different amounts, believe it or not, to get to the same serum level. Example of that uh, is like if the target is 40 nanograms per milliliter, somebody might need 2,000 international units a day. Somebody else might need 10,000 international units a day to get to the same level. So the testing is absolutely essential to find out where the woman is and what needs to be done in order to get that serum level up. The other part of this program is absolutely essential is that the physicians need to know what vitamin D is all about and how to work with it in their practice. As many of you probably already know, you can walk into physicians all over the country today and talk about vitamin D and some of them, thank goodness, know a fair amount and others will not know anything. So in order for the physicians to participate in the project, they actually have to take two different online continuing education courses 
that we have put together with the experts. One is titled the Public Health Initiative, Meeting the Vitamin D Requirements of the Pregnant Women and Improving Health Outcomes. This one was done by Dr. Wagner herself. Another one, Vitamin D, Sunshine, Optimal Health, Putting It All Together, is done by Dr. Robert Haney, our Grassroots Health Director of Research, as well as an esteemed, esteemed um, professor at Creighton University and very longtime vitamin D researcher. Even though these are continuing education courses, we also have them posted on our website, grassrootshealth.net, and I would encourage anyone uh, to go listen to them and learn what those brilliant people have to offer. Another thing that we have is, okay, what is the patient supposed to do? We have developed a unique uh, personal health app. It's actually sophisticated in one sense. It's a combination app and module in that it can be used on a cell phone. It also will be or is a computer application which allows them to get information on their health, not just on here's what your vitamin D level is, but on how well are you doing at meeting other health goals, such as your weight, such as your pain, such as the amount of exercise that you do. And it also will give them reminders. One doctor actually mentioned to me that uh, one of the biggest assets to uh, our program would be to help people get into their appointments. He asserted that if he had all of the women actually show up for their appointments, that in itself would be a big contribution to their health. The system allows the women to get text messages, emails, or even phone calls about things that they choose to be reminded about. We will have a chat group, again, as the technology has changed. Our needs to be able to provide that technology uh, need to be in step. There have been tremendous successes with uh, social groups, uh, the social media, pulling together groups of similar cause type women, and that will be available, and we will certainly monitor it and be part of it uh, and answer ongoing questions about vitamin D. As part of the the wrap up of the project, we will publish the information with the main goal of this to create broad public health action. And what we mean by that is like in any group, we have to do at least 500 women. And partly that's a statistical issue. If we don't have 500 women, um, we can't say that, well, so-and-so happened by chance. But with 500, what we really want to do is for the state of South Carolina, not just Charleston, but for the entire state, for the public health department to say, we have to do something now. And we as human beings care very much about presence. And presence meaning this happened right there in my state. It must mean something to me. It's a whole different impact on people's thinking and behavior if it happened in Timbuktu, if it happened in Texas or North Carolina or whatever. But this is going to be local. So this information is specifically intended to help create public health action. The pregnant women, right now, they can log on to this website that is listed here and read the information that is there, register to be part of the project, answer a questionnaire, once they have completed their registration, they will schedule a medical visit. And at that first medical visit, they will get a vitamin D test by their chosen physician. They will also, as soon as we, Grassroots Health, get from the lab the value of the test, we will quickly send out a package of free vitamin D supplements, which have been donated very graciously by Biotech Pharmacol. They will ship them to the pregnant women along with instructions based on the lab results. We can tell you based on the fact that, let's say your serum level was 20, like the example I used before, um, on average it takes X to get to the next level. So some guidelines would be provided there. For the healthcare professionals themselves, 
We've already mentioned the need to take the continuing education courses, which have been defined. They obviously need to say, yes, I really want to see patients who wish to participate in this project. Follow up by ordering the tests, reviewing the lab results, and obviously they will have healthier patients. And this is good for the hospital folks as well. For insurance professionals, I have chosen to put in insurance people here in particular because they are the ones with our mechanism for paying for health care uh, in the United States who really have a vested interest in the financial part as well as the impact. First of all, just like with the medical people, they need to be informed. Um, and many of them are and many of them are not. The size of the problem, and I want to come back to South Carolina. They had mentioned, I showed you there, that their rate of preterm birth was about 13% versus our 10% average. Uh, the cost, as estimated by the March of Dimes, is $55,000 each time it happens. And I took 50% of the total births of 7,620 in South Carolina every year for a potential savings of over $100 million a year. This, folks, is taxpayer money that goes in to pay for government services, for Medicaid, and for the insurance that we are getting. And so being informed and making it an insurance recommendation, not just a health care, the doctor wants to do a recommendation, but the hospitals and the doctors are highly motivated by what the insurance company will cover and take care of. So it needs to be part of the insurance plan. This then provides the opportunity for the patients themselves, along with our educational modules, to learn how to have healthier births. This is our project. We are delighted to have it going on now. It is in its in implementation stages in South Carolina. And there are two other regions in the country where we will be starting implementations yet this year. And we would be eager to hear and or work with any other communities that would like to help implement this project. So right now, if any of you have any questions, please send them to me. Uh, you can text them in on your screen and I would be delighted to answer them for you. One question I have right now is about what kind of dosing is given to children. There's a very simple average thing that Dr. Heaney presented of 35 international units per pound. Uh, the standard pediatric recommendation is 400 IU a day, which generally is fine. Um, that's about a 10 pound baby, uh, but babies grow and they need more as they grow. So take that as 35 international units per pound, and you can actually use that with whatever age you are as a starting point. From there, you still need to do vitamin D testing and monitor the supplementation to match with that. Any other questions that any of you have, I'd be happy to answer. At this point, um, we will conclude this part of the seminar, and you may certainly submit other questions via email, um, and we will see that those get answered to you. Thank you for coming today and listening to this, and help us help you get this message out to everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.